Blessed is our God always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to thee, O God, glory to thee, heavenly King, conquer the spirit of truth, Lord, and glory, and fill all things, treasury of blessings, and giver of life, come and abide in us, and cleanse us from every impurity, and save us, O Lord, good one. Holy God, holy my children, and watch over your sin us. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
is it the night shall be clean? Watch me and I shall be white as snow. Fill me with joy and gladness that the bones which cut out as we broke and rejoice. Hide the face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create me with a new heart and God put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from my presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with a healing spirit. Then I will teach transgressions thy way. Thank you. 
pages on her. We're on our own with share every word. Let's be on compared to the sheriff. The doctor found them that they dispersed to God the Lord. They took us and magnified thee. In the name of the Lord, be the blessing, Father. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. O God, the Master, Father Almighty, O Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, and now art the Holy Spirit, one God had one power, one mercy upon me, a sinner, and according to thy divine judgment, save me. Thy unworthy servant, for blessed art thou unto the age of ages. Amen.
Because he cleaves to me in love, I will deliver him, I will protect him, because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, glory to thee, O God. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, for the Lord has shown strength with his arm. He has trampled down death by death. He has become the firstborn of the dead. He has delivered us from the gates of hell and has granted the world great mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O Lord, save thy people and bless thy inheritance. Grant victories to the Orthodox Christians over their adversaries. And by thy virtue of thy cross, preserve thy habitation. Let us praise Tikhon, the Patriarch of all Russia, the Enlightener of North America, an ardent follower of the Apostolic traditions, and good pastor of the Church of Christ, who was elected by divine providence and laid down his life for his sheep. Let us sing to him with faith and hope and ask for his hierarchical intercessions. Keep the Church in Russia in tranquility and the Church in North America in peace. Gather for scattered children into one flock. Bring to repentance those who have renounced the true faith. Preserve our lands from civil strife and entreat God's peace for all people. Now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. As there is no boldness in us because of the multitude of our sins, do thou, a virgin, lay a talk us and proceed with thy son whom thou bore. For the entreaty of a mother has great power to win the favor of the master. Despise not all, venerable lady, the press of us sinners. For he who took upon himself to suffer for our sake is merciful and strong to save. Let thy tender mercies, O Lord, speedily go before us, for we are become exceeding poor. Help us, O God of thy salvation, with the glory of thy name. O Lord, deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins, master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. A gentle manner endure thee, thou to show kindness and compassion to those who repented. Thou was firm and unbending in confessing the orthodox faith, and that zealous in loving the Lord. O holy hierarch of Christ and confessor Tikhon, pray for us that we may not be separated from the love of God, which, us, which is of Jesus Christ our Lord. Now the flaming sword no longer guards the gates of Eden. It has become mystically quenched by the wood of thy cross. The sting of death and the victory of hell have become vanquished. For thou, O my Savior, hast come and cried to those in hell, enter again into paradise. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord have mercy. For thou, what every season and every hour in heaven and on earth, art worshipped and glorified of Christ our God. Who art long suffering, merciful and compassionate, who lovest the just and showest mercy upon the sinner, who callest all to salvation, and the promise of blessings to come. 
O Lord, in this hour, receive our supplications and direct our lives according to thy commandments. Sanctify our souls, hallow our bodies, correct our thoughts, cleanse our minds. Deliver us from all tribulations, evil and distress. Compass us about with thy holy angels, that guided and guarded by them we may attend to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of thine unapproachable glory. For thou art blessed unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Without the vomit, thou gavest birth to God's word. True they are told us, we magnify thee. In the name of the Lord, give the blessing, Father. To the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. O God, the Lord of hosts and author of all creation, who in fine, effortable, tender mercy has set down thine only begotten sons, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the salvation of our kind and through his holy cross, was torn of the hindering of our sins, and thereby triumphed over the curses and dominions of darkness. Do thou, O Master, who lovest mankind, accept these prayers of thanksgiving and supplication even from us sinners, and deliver us from every deadly and dark transgression and from all visible and invisible enemies that seek to do us harm. Nail our flesh with the fear of thee, and let not our hearts incline with evil words or thoughts, but wound our souls with thy love that ever gazing upon thee, guided by thy light, and beholding thee, the eternal life that no man can approach. We may send up in season prayers and thanksgiving unto thee, the Father of thy being, together with thy only begotten Son, and thy most holy good and life giving Spirit, now and ever, and until ages of ages. Amen. Forgive me, my brothers and celebrants. Forgive me, brothers and celebrants. Forgive me, brothers and sisters. <laughs> O Heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art everywhere present and fillest all things, treasury of blessings, and giver of life, calm and abide in us, cleanse us from every impurity, and save our souls, a good one. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill among men. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill among men. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. Amen. Blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. May the Lord direct your steps. May the Lord God remember you in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Bless Master. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Of the 
fruits of the earth and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For travelers by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may be delivered from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Son and immortal word of 
Jesus be commanded was crucified. O Christ our God, trampling down death by death, who art born of the Holy Trinity, glorified with the Father and the Holy Spirit, save Christian. 
patriarch of Russia, and enlightener of North America, and heart and follower of the apostolic traditions, and good pastor of the Church of Christ, who was elected by divine providence, and laid down his life for his sheep, let us sing to him with faith and hope, and ask for his hierarchical intercessions. Keep the church in Russia in tranquility, and the church in North America in peace. Gather scattered children into one flock, bring to repentance those who have renounced the true faith. Preserve our lands from civil strife, and entreat God's peace for all people. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. <coughs> and compassion to those who repented. Thou wast firm and unbending in confessing the orthodox faith and zealous in loving the Lord. O holy hierarch of Christ and confessor Tegon, pray for us that we may not be separated from the love of God, which is of Christ Jesus our Lord. Now the flaming sword no longer guards the gates of Eden. It has been mysteriously quenched by the wood of the cross. The sting of death and the victory of hell have been vanquished. For thou, O my Savior, hast come and cried to those in hell, Enter again into paradise. Thou our God, and unto thee do we send up glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever.
And the reason why I call that the Eureka moment is because that's actually what it says in the Greek. It says Eureka, only it says Eureka man. Eureka man, the Greeks would say. Eureka, amen, if you want to just put the words together. We have found him. And so, if we think about the previous week of expulsion and the very first Sunday after that, we have spent, proverbially speaking, but also actually speaking, because here we are outside those gates, scrounging around, unfortunately, looking for every lentil that we can find and whatever soybean grows on, on, a, on, a, on a prickly vine so that we could find some sustenance in this world during the great fast, that the very first proclamation is, in the death of the world, we found him. Come and see. We found him. Come and see. That's the message of the first Sunday of Great Lent. Eureka. It's the Eureka moment. Do you and I likewise have that Eureka moment? Prospera. <clears throat> the next Sunday of Great Lent, which was last Sunday, I call it the Prospera Sunday. Why? It may seem strange to you, because if you're thinking back right now, you're thinking, well, what gospel was that? Because I don't remember Prospera not only being mentioned in the gospel last Sunday, but ever. I've never heard it one time in a gospel lesson. But once again, I share with you that on that Sunday of the paralytic, when the place was packed just like this, and people could not draw near to Jesus because of the press, because of the crowd, just like this, the four friends cut the hole in the roof, something the parish council would surely fight against, <laughs> cut the hole in the roof and lowered their friend and brought him before Jesus. And what it says in the Greek New Testament is they prospered him to Jesus. Because Pharaoh means to bring and pros means towards. So prospera, that's why prospera means the bring it forward bread. They brought him, they brought their friend to Jesus. They prospered him. And it's a reminder, having our Eureka moment in the first week, we found him. And having this reminder in the second week, bring them to Jesus. Peace to you, the Father has sent me, I also send you. Go therefore and make disciples. Go out there, find them. If the church is too crowded, cut a hole in the roof and bring them, prosper them to Jesus. He's the, he is the Messiah who's found it the first Sunday and whom we have found. He is the one who not only is the healer of bodies, although those healer, healing of those bodies in this life, we also know, whether it's from our own experience or just looking into the scriptures, that it's always for more repentance and, and ultimately for a final death. Because even Lazarus, whose four-day death we will come to commemorate just a few Saturdays from now, he also eventually died a death, like you and I, and, and is waiting for the second coming of the Lord, as, as we will, um, that we should bring one another, bring one another to Christ, prosper up, our friends, our neighbors, ourselves, bring us to Jesus. The third Sunday is today, brothers and sisters, and today I want to talk about soccer practice and a rooster. <laughs> Soccer practice and a rooster. Soccer practice was this. I remember probably I was in maybe the eighth grade. I loved soccer from the smallest age, kindergarten, all the way up to high school. Sadly, I didn't make the high school soccer team. That's another story. I was happy to hear my soccer coach in the 12th grade regret that he cut me from the team in the ninth grade. But that doesn't do much for a high schooler. <clears throat> in any event, at soccer practice, which was about an hour long, our coach had us do this, run, 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 run. First we ran around the field many times, then we ran sprints on the field many times, then we ran up the hill and walked down the hill many times, probably doubling down the hill by the end because we were so tired. And he wanted us to do this for 45 minutes out of the hour. Every practice, we would say, uh, Coach, this is soccer practice. First word in that is soccer. It is not running practice. The soccer coach's view was, if we could play soccer tired, we'd whoop everybody. And so he had us run and run and run and run and run, and then we play soccer for 15 minutes, dead exhausted, and then by the time it came time to play other teams, we did exactly what that coach thought we would do, was whoop up on all the other teams, because while it might have been an equal match for the first half of the game, by the end of that game, everybody else is dragging on the, 
dead on the ground, but we're running circles around them. He was a genius. And that, brothers and sisters, is an image of the Lenten season entirely. <coughs> that we would, we would go both hungry and tired intentionally for the sake of the Lord to empty ourselves just a little bit so that we could practice, dare I say, being hungry and tired so that when it's time to act, when we are, when we are sated and well rested, we will act well and be good imitators of Jesus because under the normal circumstances of well rested and all plump, I don't know about you, but I tend to be at my worst because selfishness arises and things flow off the tongue under that kind of comfort that shouldn't. But if we can go by God's grace all day fasting on a Wednesday in preparation for the reception of that beautiful life-giving mystery and the pre-sanctified gifts, and by the end of that day, our stomach saying, feed me, and we reminding our stomach it was the stomach that was made for the food and not the food, not food for the stomach. That is, we are the boss of our stomachs, not the stomachs the boss of us. That we can go voluntarily hungry for at least eight hours in order, in order to be, become mindful and take some action on behalf of those who are involuntarily hungry. But we could also be tired and hungry in that sense so that when on the way to pre-sanctified liturgy and you're fuzzy and hazy and driving and someone cuts you off and you start to blurt something out, you can remember, wait a minute, this is the running practice at soccer practice so I won't yell at that guy or that lady and little by little practice at least that much asceticism in order to find some virtue in our lives. So that by the time we do that for six full weeks and have come to our services and made our prostrations and received from these beautiful and life-giving mysteries and we come to the beautiful cross on Holy Friday and the empty tomb on the resurrection, that we, the, the world is that much brighter and more joyful and we actually can treat our brothers and sisters and perhaps even our enemies with the love which Jesus intended when he himself hung on that cross and went down and whooped up on the devil and freed all the captives, which includes you and me in advance, by the way. And, and wouldn't that be great? That's the whole purpose of all this, to have found the Messiah, to bring one another to Jesus, and to run and run and run this exhausting race of great Lent in order to deny ourselves a little bit, in order that we might see with the eyes of Jesus by the time we get to that great and holy three-day festival. The rooster is the last one, and you must wonder by now, well, how's he going to fit a rooster in all that? The rooster that falls into all that comes from this morning's gospel lesson, when our Lord himself said, if anyone would follow after me, let him deny himself and take up his, his cross and follow me. You heard the rooster in there, I'm sure. Where is the rooster in that? The rooster in that is the rooster of Peter. It's the cock crow that we will hear in Holy Week when it says, And Peter denied him with an oath. I do not know the man. And again, he was accused of knowing Jesus, and he said, he denied him once again. He denied him and said, I do not know the man. And a third time, he denied him. I do not know the man. It, and then the cock crew. As it says in the King James, in case you didn't know the past tense of crow, it's crew. <laughs> in that case, brothers and sisters, the denial of Peter so firm, I do not know the man. That's what he said and said it three times. It is that kind of denial that came with the crowing of the rooster that we are to deny our own selves as we hear in the gospel lesson. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself. That is, for you to say about you, and for me to say about me, not the other way around, not for me to say about you, and for you to say about me, but for me to say about me, and for you to say about you, I do not know the man. And what I mean by that is that we would, little by little, a lot by a lot, ideally, begin not to recognize who we are who we used to be when we wouldn't follow Jesus. That we, would, that we would deny that we even know who that person was 
as we begin by God's goodness to be transformed into his likeness as we take these sacred days forward. That's the gift that's before us, brothers and sisters. And if I could add just one piece to all of that, I would say this little piece, that we would convert all of those things, the clanking of those gates, the forgiveness of one another, the finding of the Messiah, the Eureka, the prospera of one another, the bringing of one another to Jesus, the denial of our former self, that we could convert all of that into the opposite of what Peter says. I know the man. I know the man. I know the man. And that man is the man, God-man, Jesus, who came into the world to save us, who did not come into the world to destroy us, who did not, as we read in, the, in that same gospel about forgiveness on that first Sunday of Lent, excuse me, it was on the week before that, on, on the Meat Fair Sunday, on the Cheese Fair Sunday, when the Son of Man comes in all of His glory. Meat Fair, I'll try again. When the Son of Man comes in all of His glory. It's, this is the one who came to prepare a place for us in His heavenly mansions. The, 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 the fire of hell, the, that terrible place is not prepared for human beings, though there may be some there. It is prepared according to that gospel lesson for the devil and all his angels. He did not prepare it for you and me. He prepared this for us. He prepared this for us. So brothers and sisters, if we, if we have not yet found him, if we have not yet brought one another to him, if we have not yet denied ourselves, this is half time in Great Lent. And it's, and it's time as we sing in the great canon of the first week, and we will again when it's time to sing the whole thing on that one Thursday. And we kneel in the, in the, after the sixth ode and we say, my soul, my soul arise, why are you sleeping? The end is at hand, destruction hangs over you. Come again to your senses, that we may be spared by Christ our God who is everywhere filling all things. If we haven't found him and brought them and so forth till now, okay. But guess what? We're here today, and today is the day, and the cross is before us, and it's a reminder how the Lord is bringing us into the Son of the Kingdom. So, despair not. If you have done all those things, boast not. <laughs> uh, but instead, continue on that beautiful and humble path, recognizing God, having that Eureka moment, bringing others to Him, because through this cross, joy is coming into all the world. Amen. Patriarchs, for the blessed and ever memorable founders of this holy house, for all of our fathers and brethren, the orthodoxy part of this life before us, especially for the newly departed Edward James, Ariadna Dustin, Madeline, the mitred archpriest Anthony, Kim, the patriarch Neophyte, Andrew, Virginia, Larry, Catherine, Anne, 
and the departed servants of God, Alexander, the mitred archpriest John, Eva, Betty, Alice, Adam, the protodeacon Basil, Archbishop Myron, Nasra, the Archbishop Iacobos, Melania, Michael, Vera, Lisa, and Jose, who here and in all the world lie asleep in the Lord. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, and visitation for the servants of God, the faithful of our parish, and for all Orthodox Christians of true worship who live and sojourn in this community, for the ailing servant of God, Francis, and for the faithful of our community who are absent from this divine liturgy, for a reason worthy of God's blessing, for our college students today, Ed and Adriel, Olivia, Grace, Evelyn, Jacob, Sean, Sophia, the reader, Vladimir, Fanny, Philemon, Matthew, Zachary, Otilia, Molly, Rachel, John, Malad, Sam, Sophia, Jessica, Cassandra, Ashley, David, Dave, Peter, and with Sam, for the soldiers, Artem, Alexander, Valeri, Conrad, Sean, Benjamin, the reader, Vladimir, Abel, Jacob, Gabriel, Matthew, David, Michael, Peter, Sean, Ian, Zachary, Josiah, and Evgeny, Owen, for the handmaidens of God, Karen, the mom, <coughs> Catherine, Monica, Chickory, Brittany, and the children to be born of them, for our homebound, Nicholas and Millicent, for those suffering from natural disasters, all victims of sickness, terror, war, violence, racism, injustice, and civil strife, for Metropolitan Paul and Archbishop John of Aleppo, for Metropolitan Anufri and the suffering people of Ukraine and the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, for the suffering people of Palestine, Israel, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Haiti, and Afghanistan, especially for our citizens and soldiers who are in harm's way, for the servants of God, Natalie, Sue, Elizabeth, Jason, Effie, Kristen, Kaylee, Tenley, Joe, Ava, Nectaria, Catherine, Michael, Mahalabi, John, Rebecca, John, Elizabeth, Ann, Gerald, Matushka, Theodora, Charlene, John, and Terry, Lazarus, Samantha, Bridget, Mary Ellen, Natalie, Evan, Tony, Ita, John, Birikit, Joseph, Hannah, Jean, Catherine, the mitred Archpriest Daniel, and Matushka, Myra, for Lazarus, Catherine, Sue, Daniel, Robin, and Larry. For the arts, priest John, Matushka, Jeanette. For the seminarians who are here and their families. For the board of directors, the trustees, the faculties and staff of St. Tecom Seminary. For our missionaries, Jesse and Juanita. For our seminary families who we've been asked to pray for. The priest Kirill and Matushka, Olivia. The priest Seraphim and Matushka, Elena. The reader, Nathan and Rebecca and their families. For those celebrating this week, Jim and Linda, Neil and Laura, Shannon, Andrea, Bill, Joel, Jerry, Jennifer, Jennifer and Olivia, and for the pardon and remission of their sins. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. mankind and unto thee do we send up glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages.
Daniel, Chris, Leah, Delilah, Jeff, and Karen, who have bowed their necks before thee, grant them a light yoke, make them precious members of thy holy church, make them worthy of the love of regeneration and remission of sin and the robe of incorruption, for the knowledge of the art true God, better thus to make glorify thine honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages.
Mr. Moore, Chairman Mark, Archbishop of Philadelphia in Eastern Pennsylvania, to the Lord God and Lord of this heavenly kingdom, always now and ever on two ages of ages. The President of our country, all those serving in the civil authorities and the armed forces, may the Lord God remember them in this heavenly kingdom, always now and ever, and on two ages of ages. For those who love us, for those who hate us, for those who have asked us to pray for them, unworthy though we be, especially those that are sick and suffering in need of God's mercy and help. May the Lord God remember them in his heavenly kingdom, always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. For our family members and friends who have departed this life in the hope of the resurrection of eternal life, may the Lord God remember them in his heavenly kingdom, always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. You and all who are Christians, may the Lord God remember in his heavenly kingdom, always, now and ever, and to ages of ages. Your archpriest, your diagonal, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom, always, now and ever, and to ages of ages. Amen. Noble Joseph, when you have taken down, they must your body from the tree, wrapped it in fine linen, anointed with spices, and placed it in the tomb, the tomb of the body, and held the soul. In paradise, to the thief, the throne of the Father, and the Spirit, which I was on this place, filling all things, bearing life more fruitful in paradise, brighter than any world changing in the tomb of Christ, it has become the fountain of our sanctification. When you take it down, they must your body from the tree, wrapped it in fine linen, anointed with spices, and placed it in Christian ending to our life, painless, blameless, and peaceful. 
soul and a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask. Grant this, O Lord. Memory, in our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious, Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. Tell us all 
and wonders at all times. O Master of all, Lord of heaven and earth, and of all creation, both visible and invisible, who sits upon the throne of glory and beholds the depths, without beginning, invisible, incomprehensible, indescribable, changeless, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great God and our Savior and our hope, who is the image of thy goodness, the seal of thy very life, is revealing to the Father himself, the living word, the true God, the wisdom of the ages, the life, the sanctification, the power, the true light, the whom the Holy Spirit was revealed, the spirit of truth, the gift of sonship, the pledge of future inheritance, the first fruits of eternal good things, the life-giving power, the fountain of sanctification, through whom every creature of reason and understanding worships thee, and sends up to thee an unceasing hymn of glory, for all things are thy servants. Thou art praised by angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, principalities, authorities, powers, and many-eyed cherubim. Round about thee stand the seraphim, one with six wings, the other with six wings. With two they cover their faces, with two they cover their feet, and with two they fly, crying to one another with unceasing voices and never silent songs of glory. Singing the triumphant hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and taking the form of a servant, being likened to the body of our lowliness, that he might liken us to the image of his glory. For since by man sin entered into the world, and by sin death, so it pleased that only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of thee, the God and Father, who was born of a woman, the holy Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, who was born under the law, to condemn sin in his flesh, so that those who were dead in Adam might be made alive in thy Christ himself. He lived in this world and gave us commandments of salvation, and releasing us from the delusions of idolatry, he brought us to the knowledge of thee, the true God and Father, obtaining us for himself as his own people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and having cleansed us with water and sanctified us by the Holy Spirit, he gave himself as a ransom to death, in which we were held captive, sold under sin, and descending through the cross into hell, that he might fill all things with himself, he loosed the pangs of death. And when he had risen on the third day, having made for all flesh a path to the resurrection from the dead, since it was not possible for the author of life to be held by corruption, he became the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the firstborn of the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence over all. Ascending into heaven, he sat down at the right hand of thy majesty on high, 
and he will come to render to every man according to his works. And as memorials of his saving passion, he has left us these things, which we have set forth according to his command. For when he was about to go forth, he was voluntary and ever memorable in life-giving death. In the night which he gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread in his holy and pure hands. And when he had shown it to thee, the God and Father, and had given thanks and blessed it and hallowed it and broken it, he gave it to his old disciples and apostles, saying, Take heed, this is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sin. And likewise, he could, took the cup of the fruit of the vine, and having mingled it and given thanks, and having blessed it and hallowed it, he gave it to his old disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sin. Do this in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death, you confess my resurrection. Therefore, we also, a master, remembering his saving passion and life-giving cross, his three-day burial and resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven, and sitting at the right hand of thee, the God and Father, and his glorious and awesome second coming. Thine own, of thine own, we offer unto thee, on behalf of all, and Upon thine apostles at the third hour, and take him not from us, O good one, but renew him in us, we pray. may partake of the holy body and blood of thy Christ for judgment or condemnation. Instead, may we find mercy and grace with all the saints who through the ages have been well pleasing to thee. Ancestors, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, teachers, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith. Especially with our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, The holy prophet, forerunner of Baptist John, the holy glorious and a lot of the apostles of Tikhon, patriarch of Moscow, the enlightener of North America, and, and George of Medici, whose memories we keep this day, and holy saints for supplication visit us. Remember those who fall asleep before us and love their resurrection to the eternal life, especially for the newly departed Edward, the ever memorable son of God, the Lord of Christ Jesus. Grant them rest, O God, of the light of that continent shines in them. Remember, 
Remember, Lord, those who have offered these gifts unto me, those for whom I have on behalf of you. Remember, Lord, those who bring offerings and do good in my own churches, those who remember the Lord. Reward them with thy rich and heavenly gifts, grant them heavenly things to live for, eternal things for temporal things, incorruptible for things corruptible. Remember, Lord, those in deserts, mountains, caverns, and so forth. Remember, Lord, those who live in virginity and godliness, prosperity and peace of life. Remember, Lord, this country also look forward to this. Grant them the secure and lasting and pursue good things in their hearts concerning the church and all thy people that we and their drink to the church. May they live a calm and peaceful life in all godliness and sanctity. Remember, Lord, every principality and authority, our brethren who serve in the government and the armed forces. Preserve the good in thy goodness. Make the evil to be good by thy goodness. Remember, Lord, the people here present, also those who are absent for good reason. Have mercy on them, on us, according to the multitude of thy mercies. Fill their treasuries with every good thing. Preserve their marriages in peace and harmony. Raise the infants, guide the young, support the ages, encourage the faint heart, and gather those who are dispersed. Lead back those who are in error. And join them to the only Catholic and Apostolic Church. Free those who are vexed by unclean spirits. Sail with those who sail. Travel with those who travel by land and by air. Defend the widows. Protect the orphans. Free the captives. Heal the sick. Remember, O God, those who are in courts and mines and exile and harsh labor, and those in any kind of affliction, necessity, or distress. Remember, Lord our God, all those who entreat thy great loving kindness, those who love us and those who hate us, those who have asked us to pray for them, and worthy though we be. And remember all thy people, O Lord our God, and pour out thy rich mercies upon all of them, granting them all their petitions that are for their salvation. And do thou thyself, O God, remember all those whom we have not remembered through ignorance, forgetfulness, or because of the multitude of names, since thou knowest the name and age of each, even from his mother's womb. For thou, O Lord, art the helper of the helpless, the hope of the hopeless, the savior of the storm, the haven of the voyager, the physician of the sick. Be all things to all men, O thou who knowest each man, his request, his home, and his need. Deliver the city, O Lord, and every city and countryside from famine, plague, earthquake, flood, fire, the sword, foreign invasion, and civil war. Among the first, remember, O Lord, our Metropolitan Tikhon and our Archbishop Mark. Grant them for thy holy churches in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days. Ride thee to divide the word of thy truth. Remember, Lord, all the Northwest and this community, ride thee to divide the word of thy truth. Remember, Lord, my unworthiness, by the multitude of thy compassions, forgive my every transgression, will voluntary and voluntary. Not because of my sins, but hold the grace of thy Holy Spirit, and these gifts here set forth. Remember, Lord, the priesthood, the diaconate of Christ, the great order of the clergy, and that none of us who stand about thy holy altar be put to shame. Visit us with thy loving kindness, O Lord. Manifest thyself to us in thy rich compassions. Grant us seasonable and healthful weather. Send gentle showers upon the earth so that they bear fruit. Bless the crown of the year with thy goodness. Make the schisms of the churches to cease pacify the ragings of the nations, and quickly destroy the uprisings of heresies by the power of thy Holy Spirit. Receive us all into thy kingdom, showing us to be sons of the light and sons of the day. Grant us thy peace and thy love, O Lord our God, for thou hast given all things to us. And grant that with one mouth and one heart we may glorify and praise thine all honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. And may the mercies of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you all. And with thy spirit. Having remembered all the things together in peace, let us pray to Sanctify, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That thou, our God, who loves mankind, having received them upon us, one away to altar, above the heavens as a sweet spiritual fragrance, will send down upon us to return in divine grace, and the gift of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Lord, have mercy. That we may be delivered from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful guide, and guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord.
in the fear of God and for faith and love draw near. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God and has revealed himself. Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am first. And I believe also that this is truly my own most pure body, and that this is truly my own precious blood. Therefore I pray thee, have mercy upon me, and forgive me my transgressions, both voluntary and involuntary, of word and deed, committed in knowledge and ignorance, and may be worthy to partake. properly through prayer, fasting, and recent confession come forward to receive the most holy Eucharist. Also, if you're going to Father John's line, uh, please make sure, and maybe even mine because I'm getting older and forgetting things, uh, make sure to uh, state your, uh, your, your baptismal name so he can commune you uh, by that name. And also, members of the choir uh, who are singing may uh, need to sort of uh, be asked to sort of come towards the front of the line so they can get back uh, to singing. Um, just uh, allow them uh, forward. Uh, uh, they have my permission, okay? <laughs> all right, God bless you all.
of the Holy Glorious and the laudable Apostles, by the might of the precious and life-giving cross, whose honorable veneration we celebrate this day, of our Father among the saints, based of the great Archbishop of Caesarea in Cappadocia, whose liturgy we have celebrated today, on this commemoration of the repose of Tikhon, Patriarch of Moscow, and Enlightener of North America, George the Confessor, the Bishop of Mytilene, the Venerable Daniel, the Martyr Calliopus, the Martyrs who us, the Deacon Equilina, and the 200 soldiers who suffered with them in Sinope, of the Venerable Serapion of Egypt, whose memory we also keep this day, and of all the saints that have shone forth in this North American land, and of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, have mercy on us and save us, for as much as he is good, and he loves mankind. Someone, I invited them to fellowship, and they're like, we have no idea where that is. And I just assumed, and everyone knew that's where we go to drink coffee and hang out with each other. So I just want to make sure, um, or especially for our guests, that the fellowship hall uh, is next door. We have uh, several people who are celebrating anniversaries this week, and we want to recognize them and ask God to grant them many years. Jim and Linda Crutt are celebrating today on the 7th. Neil and Laura Watkins are celebrating on the 8th. Uh, for birthdays, uh, Shannon Henry, one of the grandchildren of the Henrys, is celebrating on the 7th. Um, uh, Andrea Zart is celebrating her birthday on the 10th. Uh, Bill DeCanick is celebrating on the 10th. Many years, Bill. Joe McClure, our faithful photo deacon, is celebrating <laughs> on the 11th. I may press you in the service yet again, Joe. We need a picture at the end. Um, Jerry Cole uh, is celebrating on the 12th, many years. Uh, Jennifer Lewis is celebrating on the 12th. Uh, Jennifer Huanitz is celebrating on the 12th. And Olivia Droz is celebrating on the 13th. Let's remain standing uh, and sing many years to all who are celebrating. Grant, O Lord, a peaceful, prosperous life, the furtherance of all good things. Unto his beatitude, our Metropolitan Tikhon, his eminence, our Archbishop, Archbishop Mark, for the servants of God, the Archpriest John, Matushka Jeanette, and their family, 
for the trustees, faculty, staff, students, and their families of St. Tecon Seminary, for the servants of God, Jim and Linda, Neil and Laura, Shannon, Andrea, Duck Bill, Joseph and Jerry, for Jennifer, Jennifer and Olivia, for all who are here, especially those who are visiting with us today. O oh Lord, preserve them for many, many blessed years. No. Father John was saying how inspiring it is to see all those children, and it's true. It's, it's such a blessing. Um, I usually only get half of them, just to see them all come up at once. It was what a joy um, uh, to, uh, to have all of these young people that are brought by their parents, because that's the only way they can get here. Most of them don't have their driver's licenses. Wait a second. Um, can I? Yes, God bless them and strengthen them. Um, I have a couple of quick announcements, and then I want to give Father John an opportunity to um, address us once again, uh, a little bit about the seminary. Um, but uh, you'll see in your bulletins uh, that we have uh, a Vesper service this afternoon at 5 p.m. 
5 p.m. We're welcoming our local Pan-Orthodox community for the Vespers. This is our Sunday uh, to host. I know many of you are preparing the fellowship afterwards, but um, we know that the most important work that we do is here uh, in the church, and we hope that you will uh, come and pray along with us and welcome our guests uh, for, that, uh, for that service. Please also um, pay attention to your bulletins where you have our notes from the parish council from our meeting this last month and some of the, the donations, the ongoing donations that, uh, that are, we are involved with, as well as the fact that we're um, today we're going to be giving Father John uh, the scholarship uh, fund for uh, Deacon, or sorry, Father Seraphim, Father Seraphim. Last time he was here a deacon, and then the next day he was ordained a priest. Father Seraphim, Montesca Lena, and their family, which is one of the great honors we have as a parish community, is to be involved in supporting the tuition for one of the students at St. Ticon's uh, each year. It's a commitment that we've made that I think is uh, uh, hopefully something that we will do until the Lord comes again in his glory. Um, so I want to congratulate you all on your continued support. Uh, of our beloved St. Ticon Seminary, uh, the place that formed uh, Father Dan, uh, myself, our, um, our proposed but dearly beloved Father Dan Resitar, uh, Deacon John uh, was in the, uh, uh, the St. Ticon uh, program uh, at uh, St. Stephen Cathedral, and so we um, have a lot to be thankful for, for the formation uh, uh, of, that was offered to us through St. Ticon Seminary. Um, please also know that His Eminence will be with us for Palm Sunday weekend, which is, is quite uh, the blessing. And make sure that you uh, set aside on your calendars the parish work days on Saturday, April 20th and Saturday, April 27th, so we can help prepare our grounds uh, for Holy Week and Pascha. Also, you'll see in here that there is a note about an engagement fund. I had no idea what to call this thing, but we're calling it the engagement fund. Uh, and this is to support uh, three of our young adults uh, who will be making uh, significant, we hope, um, spiritually life-changing trips uh, this summer. Um, we have two students that are going on Crossroad. Uh, Tressa Hanna and Zoe Vernack are both going on Crossroad. Uh, and John Romain is going to Project Mexico. And so we are pulling uh, all three of them together and we uh, hopefully will be able to fully support uh, their participation in these important uh, mission trips. And uh, we hope that, um, uh, that they will come back and they'll report to us their trips. So we'll just glean a little grace from them as they uh, come back from these, uh, from these trips. So please um, look at that. Um, you can, you can uh, make a donation online. Uh, or you can just write a check and write engagement fund on it. Please um, uh, also uh, note the rest of the uh, information in the bulletin and including the fact that I believe they're still looking for volunteers for the St. Ticon uh, summer camp. Uh, and we hope that, uh, I think we have several, several of our parishioners already um, volunteering, but if anyone else uh, wants to really make a difference this summer uh, and support uh, our, our youth and our young adults here in the Diocese of Eastern Pennsylvania and beyond, I encourage you uh, to do that. I mentioned uh, over this past week, but I want to mention again, that uh, Father Timothy's father, Edward Monicki, fell asleep in the Lord this past Thursday. Uh, Ed was a, just a solid Orthodox Christian, a firefighter, salt of the earth, loved Christ, uh, obviously uh, formed uh, the heart uh, that became uh, Father Timothy and his two sisters. Um, and um, I just ask that you uh, keep him uh, in your prayers for the newly departed uh, and keep his wife Karen and Father Timothy, uh, Leah and Anna in your prayers. Um, I will be going to Delaware uh, to celebrate the funeral services on Monday and Tuesday. And so I'll be representing our community at those uh, services. I also, in a very um, selfish way, ask you to keep uh, in prayer today. Today is the sixth anniversary of the repose of my grandfather, uh, Father John Narabeki, um, a blessed memory. Um, and it's just it's so hard to imagine as these years peel by. Um, but uh, I just, I love it when, uh, when Sunday coincides with the anniversary of a memorial of a loved one. It makes it feel even more uh, special. Um, so I ask that you keep him uh, in your God-pleasing prayers uh, as well. I think that's enough for me. Um, let's hear from Father John a little bit about 
uh, the seminary, which again, I said, is a place of deep importance for us and our church. It has fed the vocations of so many of the, uh, the, the men who have been called to serve you here in this community. Mission Choir, beautiful job today. It was prayerful. Uh, I remember my days of coming and singing on the Mission Choir. I remember coming here. Uh, Tim, I read the epistle here one day. I don't know if that means that you'll read the epistle or be the priest here someday. I don't know. Who knows? If God's providence, who knows? Um, but uh, it's just so so wonderful to see you all. Uh, and thank you for blessing us with your, with your gift. So, Father John. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to you forever. I recognize that I'm standing between you and Go Juice. I have seven, seven words to say to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Vibrant, local, Eucharistic community. Thank you because this parish makes St. Tegon's possible. You, you um, prayed in the liturgy today for Jesse Brandau and his dear wife, whose name is escaping me. You support them. Missionary, excuse me, Juanita, of course. There you go. Jesse and Juanita, you are, uh, you support these amazing, amazing missionaries there. You are sending people out also into our land. Today, if you have not met, I look forward to your meeting. Father Seraphim, who's with us singing, it's your generosity, there he is, that has made his seminary possible. He will tell you a little more about himself, perhaps in the parish hall, that he's going to serve in the cathedral in Denver, Colorado. So this parish is helping to continue to establish and grow Orthodox Christianity, not only in Guatemala, but also in Denver. That's very important. Don't lose touch with him and pray for him and his family, but thank you for all that you've given to make that possible. Thank you. The second one, I thank, I thank you and I thank God about this incredible place. You all, maybe you don't know it. You know, it's easy, it's easy to be in a totally and completely amazing place all the time. And because it's so completely and ama amazing all the time and you're here all the time, you don't know that it's not like this everywhere. It is not like this everywhere. This is a very, very special and beautiful place. So I thank God that he has established Christ the Savior Church here, that he has sent you uh, faithful priest after faithful priest after faithful priest, and I'm delighted that they are, are from our seminary. Father Stephen, you are a shining example of what I hope for, for, for sure, to be a graduate of our seminary. And this parish, if we could clone it, if we believed in cloning, which we don't, we can have a, have a conversation about that tonight. If we did, this is a place we would clone, and this is a man with his family whom we would clone. Um, seminarians, take a mental snapshot of this place and let it soak in your bones because when you go to Denver, for example, whatever is not like here, make it like here and you will, you will be pleasing to the Lord. Um, thank, I thank you and I thank God also for supporting this dear man who is resting a little bit back here. Father, Father, how you doing? Um, <laughs> told me in the altar that he's coming up on his 50th anniversary of graduation from St. Tegon's this just a month from now. So we thank God also for his, his great and amazing work in the church and all that he continues to do here as a, as a God-crowned king. Um, um, thank God. Vibrant local Eucharistic community. Uh, Nathan Hoppe, longest serving missionary in Albania who's doing that go there for and make disciples of all nations. He wrote his doctoral thesis and project on vibrant local Eucharistic communities. And this is a supreme, this, you all, y'all, all y'all, all, you are a supreme example of a vibrant local Eucharistic community. You can't imagine, perhaps again, that half of your church would empty out of 90 or more children and it's still standing room only in the church. That is a beautiful problem to have. I whispered to Father a moment ago, it's time to plant a church. Ha ha ha, those are nervous laughs, I'm sure. It's time to plant, a, it's time to plant another church and, and let this growth continue and continue. It's so beautiful. 
Um, St. Tecum's is in a beautiful season right now. We're in a beautiful season thanks to God and thanks to you. There's much more to say about that, but you see the fruit of it in your altar every, every time you're here. You see some of the fruit of that in the singing uh, mission choir here. We've received the longest possible accreditation that's allowable uh, in our recent accreditation visit, 10 years. It's a miracle at St. Tecum's. We're so grateful for that. The place is thriving and growing. If you haven't been in a little while, get on high Highway 81 uh, and, and drive straight up the highway, turn right into Pocono Mountains and come see us. Um, it's, it's so beautiful and we're so grateful to you. I acknowledge now that I have, uh, I have spoken long enough I'm, I'm, I'm being told, uh, my wife is telling the little child to tell me, thank you, and we'll talk in the prayer song. So just make a bow uh, towards the cross and uh, venerate uh, the cross. Also, uh, we are taking a collection today uh, to, uh, to additionally support uh, the seminary. Uh, this is not directed directly towards uh, Father Seraphim and his family, but this is to the area of greatest need for the seminary, which as someone who leads an institution, those are music to your ears. Because you can just say whatever we need and not restrict those funds. So um, let's uh, be generous uh, in our support of St. Tecon uh, Seminary. Uh, in gratitude for Father John's visit today and for the seminarians who are here. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus Christ.
but has made me worthy to be a partaker of thy holy things. I thank thee for thou hast permitted me the unworthy to commune of thy most pure and heavenly gifts. But, O Master, who lovest mankind, who for our sakes did die and rise again and gave us these awesome and life creating mysteries for the good and sanctification of our souls and bodies, let them be for the healing of soul and body, the repelling of every adversary, the illumining of the eyes of my heart, the peace of my spiritual powers, of faith and shame of all of my sin, the fulfilling of wisdom, the observing of thy commands, the receiving of thy divine grace in the eternal of my kingdom. Preserved by them and thy holiness, may I always remember thy grace and love not for myself alone, but for my Thank you. 